Space is big and beautiful and holds unfathomable mysteries like the meaning of life, the universe and where did that other sock disappear to? Ah. And there are plenty of space facts that everyone has heard of. Sound can't travel in space, there's only 8 planets in the solar system and neutron stars can spin at a rate of 600 rotations per second. Ok, maybe not that one. However, there are many facts drifting around out there that just aren't really facts at all. They're myths. Space myths. And so, to give you an idea of just how many cosmological misunderstandings there are about space, here's my top 5. Number 5 Number 5 Space is cold. This one is a bit of a trick question. Space is neither hot or cold. It has no temperature. A what? You see, it all comes down to the definition of temperature. Something gets hot when its particles get thermal energy and vibrate. The more thermal energy, the more vibration and the hotter something is. Conversely, when something gets cold, its particles have very little thermal energy and they just jiggle in place, like this. The critical thing you need for both hot and cold temperatures is particles. And in the deepest, darkest vacuum of space, that's the one thing you're kind of lacking. No particles to jiggle means no temperature. However, there is still thermal energy out there, radiating away from the super hot luminous balls of hydrogen and helium we call stars. And when this thermal energy encounters particles, whether it's a moon, a space station or a packet of astronaut poo set adrift, it can heat up. A lot. So powerful is this radiative energy that the bare metal of the International Space Station regularly reaches 120 degrees Celsius. In contrast, the shaded side receiving little radiative energy is shockingly cold at minus 160 degrees Celsius. In the remotest corners of space, away from the warming glow of stars, the thermal energy of any passing dust and gas particles reaches a minimum of minus 270 degrees Celsius. So admittedly, quite chilly. So space is not hot or cold, but can be incredibly hot and incredibly cold all at the same time. I'm glad I've cleared that up for you. Number four. The moon has a permanent dark side. Looking up at the night sky, we are all too familiar with the man in the moon, or Kenneth, as I like to call him. Hello. The fact is, wherever you are in the world, whenever you see the moon, you always see the same patterns of craters. Which means, given that the moon is more or less a spherical ball of rock, that there is another side that we never see. A dark side, as it were. Only it's not dark, as I will demonstrate. Take a look at my incredibly high-tech solar system. The moon, this melon, shines because it's reflecting light from the sun. That's this spotlight. The moon goes around the Earth, which is me, once every 28 days or so, but since it's tidally locked to the Earth, it also rotates on its axis at exactly the same rate, so that one side is always facing the Earth. The other side we never see, but for most of the month it is at least partially lit by the sun. You see, that's how the moon phases work. When there's a new moon or a tiny toenail crescent seen from the Earth, most of the sun's light is on the far side. So it is quite definitely not dark. Number three. Number three is the belief that the Great Wall of China is the only man-made structure that can be seen from space. This one is wrong, but how it's wrong depends on where you think space starts and how you are doing your seeing. For most, the boundary between Earth and space is the Kármán line, at an elevation of 100 kilometers above sea level. From this height, which is roughly the same elevation as the Northern Lights, you can indeed see the Great Wall of China as a thin line traced through the Chinese landscape. But it's not the only man-made structure that you can see from here. Unaided observations from the Space Shuttle revealed plenty of evidence of humans on Earth. Cities can be easily picked out from the surrounding countryside and large landmarks like the greenhouses of Almeria in Spain and the Kennecott copper mine in the US are also distinguishable. So at the boundary of space, yes, the Great Wall is visible, but no, it's not the only man-made thing that is. Zooming out to around 400 kilometers above the Earth, you get to the orbit of the International Space Station. Astronauts aboard the ISS can only usually see the Great Wall with a telescope, whereas straight desert roads that slice through the landscape are still visible with the naked eye. So, sorry Great Wall, despite your incredible feat of engineering, you lose out to a simple stretch of tarmac. Not
Number two. Number two. The famous space pen. The story goes that during the space race, NASA spent millions of dollars developing a pen that would work without the gravity of Earth, whereas the Soviet space agency thriftily opted to use a pencil. The truth is much more interesting. In the early days of the space race, both the Soviets and US were using pencils for all their microgravity writing needs. But a pencil is not ideal. Bits of graphite can flake off and play havoc with the electrical circuits and their wood and carbon construction makes for a dangerously flammable bit of kindling in an oxygen-rich spaceship environment. NASA attempted to address this issue with mechanical pencils, but at a cost of $128.89 each, this made for a pretty expensive doodling tool. Enter the Fisher Pen Company, who did indeed invest vast amounts of money into developing a pen that didn't rely on gravity to push the ink out of a barrel, and so could write upside down as well as withstanding the huge temperature variations common in space. But the crook in the tale is that none of the millions of dollars invested it ever came from NASA. It was purely a private venture. Fisher offered the pen to both the US and Soviet space agencies for the princely sum of $2.39. Bargain. Space pens have since been used on all flights since the 1960s. Number one. And number one. Paradoxically, the most unbelievable and yet the most widely believed of all our space myths. Astrology is the study of how the movements of divine celestial objects affects the minutia of human affairs and terrestrial events. The only minor problem is that it's been shown to have no scientific validity at all, i.e. it's a load of shit. It doesn't matter whether you think that you have the fiery temperament of a Leo or you were born under the reign of a melancholy Saturn. Countless scientific tests have unequivocally shown the position of the planets or the month that you were born in have no effect on your lives whatsoever. Yes, the planets may be performing a huge cosmic dance thanks to immense gravitational forces, but don't go forgetting the even more immense distances between them and you puny humans. There's just no physical way that the retrograde of Venus can make 7 billion people on Earth suddenly more reflective. But my horoscope is so accurate, I hear you cry. The fact of the matter is that if you say something vague enough, almost everyone will find a way to relate it to their lives. For example, this month you will have a financial dilemma. Spooky, eh? How could they possibly predict that? And if today's prediction is wrong, well, there'll be another one tomorrow. So there you have it, five space-related myths thoroughly debunked for your viewing pleasure. But have I missed any? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to subscribe for more science videos.